Good morning. My name is Dr. Rajesh Bachu, consultant musculoskeletal radiologist at the Royal Orthopedic Hospital in Birmingham. As a part of initiative in spreading the knowledge of musculoskeletal radiology, I'm doing a short talk in conjunction with Shades of Radiology. Before we proceed, uh, I want to let you know about MSK Radiology for You, which is a free website and app with a collection of over 4,000 cases of various musculoskeletal radiology pathologies. I'm just going to show you a series of cases and then we're going to discuss about it. So this is a young person, 50 year old, presenting with medial knee pain. And what we can see here is florid osseous edema involving the medial femoral condyle with associated marks of tissue edema involving the metaphysis. And the patient here, again, you can see florid osseous edema involving the medial femoral condyle. Note that there is no osseous edema involving the medial tibial condyle, but there remains florid osseous edema involving the soft tissues of the metaphysis. This is another patient with bilateral osseous edema involving the medial lateral femoral condyles with associated marks of tissue edema predominantly centered over the metaphysis. In this case, you can see small foci of subchondral sclerosis involving the medial femoral condyle. What about the tibia in this case? Another young person presenting with subchondral insufficiency fracture. You see this small subchondral sclerosis involving the medial tibial condyle on the left and a further small foci of subchondral sclerosis in keeping a subchondral insufficiency fracture and marked osseous edema. Note that there is soft tissue edema involving the metaphysis in this case in the region of Pes and Serenus um, on the left and a further osseous edema in this uh, involving the medial aspect of the medial tibial condyle. There is also a presence of soft tissue edema along the MCL. Uh, the same case again, this is a patient that I showed you before. There is florid osseous edema on the medial lateral femoral condyle with associated subchondral sclerosis involving the medial femoral condyle in keeping with subchondral insufficiency fracture. Note the florid soft tissue edema predominantly centered over the metaphysis. This patient was advised non weight bearing or partial weight bearing with the help of crutches and he followed the same religiously and a follow-up scan in about six to eight weeks uh, demonstrates significant resolution of osseous edema and corresponding decrease in the soft tissue edema in relation to the metaphysis. Uh, what about this one? Another patient who presented with medial knee pain, you can see florid osseous edema and one of the medial femoral condyle with associated soft tissue edema. He was advised non-weight bearing, however, he was non-compliant. As a result, he subsequent on subsequent scan in four weeks, he developed subchondral sclerosis. There is increase in the extent of soft tissue and osseous edema. Now he has got subchondral depression of the subchondral bone, uh, subchondral insufficiency fracture. The osseous edema is still persistent four weeks later. And now you can see subchondral uh, depression with subchondral cystic change and early secondary OA. So this is a patient who is non-compliant, uh, who did not follow partial weight bearing. And subsequently there was worsening of the subchondral insufficiency fracture. So what we describe is what we call as metaphysical burst sign, the, the soft tissue edema in relation to the metaphysis uh, of the, the, the distal femur or proximal tibia uh, is described as a metaphysical burst sign. And if you look at the anatomy, the, the, the genicular arteries, they pierce through this region of the metaphysis and supply the femoral condyles and the tibial condyles. In patients with subchondral insufficiency fracture, there's increased uh, intraosseous pressure as a result, there is increased vascular pressure of these vessels resulting in um, diffusion of the, uh, the seepage of the fluid from the vessels into the adjacent soft tissues. And as the entry is at that level, hence there is edema of the soft tissues in the metaphysis. If you look at subchondral insufficiency fracture, it was previously known as spontaneous osteonecrosis. The first stage is osseous edema, only visible on MRI and radiographs will be normal. In stage two, you can see subchondral uh, sclerosis or subchondral insufficiency fracture. However, the convex surface of the articular surface is still maintained. And in stage three, you see the fracture, but the subchondral uh, bone may demonstrate uh, concavity or depression. And in stage four, there is associated secondary OA. So to conclude, metaphysical birth sign is an early indirect sign of subchondral insufficiency fracture. Its presence or extension correlates with the severity of the condition. And in our experience, we did not find this sign in relation to any other conditions. If you want to read more about it, you can read our paper in Journal of Medical Imaging and Radiation Oncology, where we published the same. Thank you. And if you want to follow us on MSK Radiology for you, the next webinar is on 4th of September on tumor and foot. Thank you.